I want to thank the beautiful music from Rocky Pardee. Really appreciate the musicians here and that we have their help night after night. Good evening, everyone. So happy to see you here. I was just mentioning to someone, it's, it's unbelievable. This is the last night. What, how many nights? Twelve? Twelve nights? Seems like we just started. I don't know. Maybe we ought to ask Gordon if he would stick around more. We can just go another week or two, huh? <laughs> but anyway, someday, someday we're going to be able to continue our, what we've begun here on earth. It'll be in heaven and for all eternity. The joy of learning and growing in our appreciation of our wonderful, loving God. We want to welcome you here once again. And as always, we're going to take a moment and bow our heads and have an invocation. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you have done in this series. Lord, you have been here with us. We have placed all our plans and, and the message and all that we do to make, try to make this happen. Lord, it's been in your care, in your hands, and you have accepted this as an offering, and you have blessed, you have brought forth fruit, abundant and solid. And Lord, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord, this is our last night. Once again, we pray for your spirit. We ask that you will be here to bless Gordon, our evangelist, and that you will bless each one here with a heart that is receptive and a mind that is keen and has understanding. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to have our theme song at this time. So, yes, you need this. Great. Would you stand with me as we sing, Oh, Brother, Be Faithful. Well, tonight, for our last health presentation, we will do something slightly different. Have you been enjoying the health presentations? Okay, very good. Well, today, we're going to encourage you to go out and share. Uh, but first, we want to go through a little story. You all know that we have been going through a pandemic, that uh, and a lot of people have been thinking about past pandemics, right? And there's been a lot of talk about the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, right? 
Well, I want to share something very encouraging with you tonight that hopefully you can um, take with you and put in practice. Um, during that time, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, General Conference uh, had a doctor who made a couple of statements, and I'll read those to you, that appeared in a publication of October 31st, 1918. What a sick person or a family of a sick person wants at that time during that pandemic was for someone that can and will do something for them. Is that true? Have you been sick the past couple of years? And have you benefited or have appreciated when people helped you with something, maybe bringing groceries or maybe, um, tr you know, hydrotherapy remedies or different things? Well, it wasn't any different then. He also said during this pandemic or epidemic, every Seventh-day Adventist has had the 10 times as many opportunities for service as he could fill if he had been ready for them. If you are equipped with natural remedies, you could make 10 times the impact on somebody than you could by just preaching to them. Is that good news? Would you like to have effective uh, outreach opportunities and impact? Well, here it is tonight. So what are some lessons learned? The great lesson, it seems to me, that we should learn from this experience is to get ready for later and worse scourges than this, which will surely come prophecy being true. And as you can see, there a little picture from that time of a medical missionary that was doing exactly that. Every home should be a small sanitarium, like a little wellness center. Everyone should be a medical evangelist. And the medical work is the last work to close. So tonight I want to just talk about the uh, benefit of fomentations. How many of you know what fomentations are? Okay, very good. For those of you who don't, um, we did a workshop here, and maybe my deacons can help me. Uh, we have a little handout that if you haven't picked it up, then you can uh, pick it up later. Um, it's resources for a hydrotherapy workshop that we did on December uh, 5th, right here. You can look on our website for December 5th. It is on the handouts. We have all the handouts from that workshop on the website, sandpointadventist.org, natural remedies. All the handouts are there, videos, and uh, all the instructions on how to do this yourself. You excited? So I want to highlight one success story. The young man that you saw there on the beginning of the slide was Paul Stuyvesant. He was a, as his granddaughter, Cheryl Hosford, recounts, he had just graduated from nursing school at Hinsdale Sanitarium in Illinois, and he moved down to Collegedale, Tennessee to help build a new school uh, it was Southern Junior College, which is now Southern University, to help as a school nurse for the male students. And the school had moved to a new location, and they were having to build the buildings on a very limited budget. There were no dormitories built yet, and so the students were living in tents that had very little heat. And that's, that winter was a very harsh winter like we have had here in Idaho. As you can see in that previous picture, they were uh, out in tents. The college students started coming down with the flu as the nurse for the young men, he set out to work providing hot water treatments. That's what the granddaughter said, they're called fomentations. Um, he was given a tent and an assistant and the two of them worked tirelessly around the clock to help the sick men. Not one of their patients died. Do you know how many people died during that pandemic? 50 uh, million people? The one sixth of the population of the world at the time died. 
one-third of the population was infected. Not one of their patients died. Would you like that kind of success? You can have it. You can learn this, and you will be able to use it because worse pandemics will come, prophecy being true. Well, during that time, both my grandfather and his assistant because, became sick with the flu, and my grandfather recovered, but his assistant died. For the rest of his life, long life, my grandfather regretted that he could not be able to treat his assistant to recover. This is actually what, this happened when they went to Oakwood College. They went to Oakwood College and helped with this, with these treatments, and that's when this happened. So now it is time for you to know how to do hydrotherapy. Someone whose first and most important mission is to educate people about the laws of health that we have been learning is called a medical missionary. You can um, learn, educate yourself, educate others. So once disasters, disease, sickness is present, you can assist them in recovering. You can help them with the different health principles that we have shared here night after night. Because we know that health care is not always available and doesn't always have the answers, but God does. We will be faced with um, a lot of issues in the future. This is a statement I want to leave you with. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have the opportunity today, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And those who do not, and those who do this, will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help. Councils on Health, page 506. Are you prepared to share? Do you have your toolbox? If you don't, go on the website, as I have told you. The deacons can help you with that handout that I mentioned. And... Talk to one of us if you want more, uh, more tools. So I just want to encourage you and leave you with that, and thank you. Good evening again, and I have the last two books from the boxes, The Great Controversy and The Desire of Ages, and tonight Terry Loss has the winning numbers right in here, and I'm going to shuffle them a little bit, and here it is. Okay. Look at your number. Is it 011? One, one? One, one. The last three numbers. 011. One, one. Okay, you all have sad faces. So <laughs> Here's another one. 018. Did I hear a smile? 018. Missed it by a number? <laughs> 018? All right, come on. Are you serious? Come on up here. Is it? Oh, it's Lucas. Come on, Lucas. He says, I don't want the number. Lucas, look, you, you even get to choose. You have a choice. Come on up here. How are you doing? You're getting almost as tall as me. <laughs> Next year. Which one? This one? Desire of Ages? Wonderful. Thank you for, for being here tonight. God bless you, Lucas. Okay, and the 
and the Great Controversy book goes to 065. 065. Ramon. <laughs> All right, come on. Here we go. Thank you, Dr. Ramon. Wonderful. I have a couple other things that I would like to share with you, bring to your attention. We have uh, a special music tonight. We want to set the tone for the message, Gordon. And uh, we appreciate um, those that have prepared this music. But before that, I'd like to make sure everyone has an envelope. Do you all have envelopes. All right, the ladies out there just do their job. Do you all have envelopes? Anyone that does not have an envelope, raise your hand. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, and the purpose is that when the Holy Spirit impresses upon you a need, you might, the Lord might be wanting you to uh, take Bible studies. You can mark that, or if you're interested in a visit, you want to sit down and talk and pray. We're available. Uh, baptism in the near future. We want, you want to prepare for that. Um, or anything else, you can uh, uh, let us know. Um, this envelope is also an opportunity to give back to the church uh, here. The Seventh Adventist Church has sponsored this uh, series. And if you would like to uh, express your appreciation for what you, how you have been blessed, um, we want to give you the opportunity. And you can write a check. You can um, uh, just you can mail this back to us, and we will receive it. Um, very appreciated. Um, but tonight, I, I want to do two things. Um, that have to do with Gordon McGee's ministry. And the first one is I would like the deacons, the uh, ushers to come forward and to pick up an offering for the ministry, Gordon. We want to, this offering to go to Gordon McGee's uh, ministry. Did you want to tell us a little bit about uh, any plans, um, Gordon, we, we, we recognize uh, the gifts that God has given us Praise the Lord. In, in you and um, the blessing. And I know that other churches have uh, mm -hmm. needs as well. Amen. And Amen. we want them to, to be able to um, sponsor Amen. Uh, your ministry. Yeah. So, so um, how it's structured right now is... Um, as you heard my testimony uh, Friday night, my wife and I were going to start out together. She was going to be the medical missionary arm as the RN. I was right. going to be the preaching arm. Um, so the ministry is uh, how to live ministries, and we're doing business as go stand and preach, which is the preaching section, Wonderful. right? Um, and then there's going to be the Protestant reformer, which is going to be the podcast. And right now, um, I'm out with the IRS right now for the 501C status. Okay. They told me I can function as such. Uh, spent some money to get that done because I know people want to give and be able to, you know, write off, you know, so those if someone, gifts. So if someone wants to uh, give, uh, you know, this offering is going to be... The loose one, uh, yeah. Yes, the one that is right. being um, uh, if they wanted a received tax receipt, now. Right, they wanted a tax receipt. It needs to go to Go Stand and Preach via check. Okay. And um, if someone wants to send something for your ministry, what's the best way to do that? Um, right now, it'll just be check either hand or send it to this P.O. Box if you want to send it later on. Okay. Uh, P.O. Box 224 in Campbellsville, Kentucky. 
okay. uh, which is on the screen. Uh, right. When I get back, I'll be working on the digital platforms and all that. Uh, but check right now. Okay. Or, or loose offering cash. Also, the cash app is there if all you're right. feeling that way. But if you Wonderful. need a tax receipt, I need to have your information, so a check would be just fine. All right. I Thank you. My, my wife and I uh -huh. um, you know, would like to, um, as the Lord blesses, be able to send some offerings oh, your you. way Praise so that Lord. we can, Amen. and I know there's other people that want to do the Amen. same. Um, and besides uh, monetary uh -huh. gifts, uh -huh. we, we believe in prayer. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. And you know, we've, we've been Thank praying. You. There's Amen. been different initiatives Amen. of prayer Amen. that have been going on. Amen. And we believe the Lord is answering those prayers. Yeah. And, There's uh, been a lot of people praying for this meeting. That's right. That's right. Uh, for me, for us, uh, for this. And it's just been a blessing. It's really been a blessing. And I, I, I received confirmation from the Lord when I was asked to come, and he has not let me down. Wow. Yeah. He has not let me down This was all. the first, first evangelistic effort, right? This was the first evangelistic effort on the Go Stand and Preach, and it was back here in Sandpoint where, as I mentioned Friday night, my wife had been laboring, my wife and I had been laboring for souls here, and some of those souls gave their lives to Christ this morning in the water yeah. and grave. Amen, so, amen. So... God is what, awesome. Yes, his timing. It is incredible. And uh, how he puts incredible. things together, his providence. Absolutely. How many of you want to commit to pray for Gordon McGee's uh, ministry? Thank you. All Praise right, the Lord. you have a lot of people praying for Amen. you. Amen. And we're going to be watching and, yeah. and uh, continuing to for sure. see with the Lord uh, mm -hmm. how he works. Uh, you can subscribe, too, to my YouTube channel, Go Stand and Preach. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers there. Okay. All right. Um, the same oh, handle can... at, on TikTok. Got about 18,000 subscribers there. And be on the lookout for the, uh, for the podcast and everything like that. But, so I don't, have a, I don't have a website right now, just my YouTube channel, and I'll be getting around to the other things as we come All along. All right. Well, wonderful. So, thank you so much. Well, well Gordon, we just we, we want to, as a church, as the Sandpoint Seventh-day Adventist Church, we want to say a big thank you oh, to thank you. you. You have you. truly yeah, been a blessing, you. has he not? Yeah. And Praise God Lord. has Amen. used you. Amen. And what we experienced this morning, it's something that we won't forget. Amen. It, it will leave its mark here, uh, giving much praise and honor to our uh, wonderful God. God is good. You know, Amen. thank you. And um, this is a little card with a, a gift inside. <laughs> thank and you. just to say a thank you, thank and you. we love you. We're going to be too. praying for you. Thank you, you Pastor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I also wanted to say, too, um, as I got going through some old pictures and everything, uh, my wife and I, we moved here in 2008, and so much of our lives is here. Yeah. Um, with this church, with the Hayden Church, this with, with Northern Idaho. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of friends in here, a lot of familiar faces that are just interwoven into that part, that season of my life and of our lives. So just thank you all for being friends <laughs> and family. And I can't wait to see you at the Tree of Life, beloved. Amen. 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 Well, let me have a word of prayer. Oh, come on, yes. Heavenly Father, we want to pause here in our uh, program tonight to thank you. Thank you for Brother Gordon. Mm. Gordon McGee is very loved here. Mm. And you have used him. You have blessed us together, mm. and it's been such a joy to work together for the, the salvation of many, mm. and Lord, our very own salvation. Amen. And so we pray that you will continue to bless Gordon. It is obvious to us that you have gifted him, you have called him, you have uh, made him capable. It has been your doing, and we pray, Lord, that you will protect your work in his life, that you mm -hmm. will protect him from the evil one mm -hmm. as he goes about in, on, um, on his father's business. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we pray a blessing tonight, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. thank you, guys. Okay, I'm trying to remember what I might have forgotten. So... Terry, where are you? Oh, he has the same problem I do. So, but Gloria and, and uh, Lydia are going to have our special music tonight. I've been looking forward to it. Thank you.
That was beautiful, friend. Lydia, Gloria, thank you. Praise the Lord. That was beautiful. Man. Um, last night happened fast. Um, I want to say thank you to all the people that we don't see up front, uh, to the audiovisual team uh, that, that's committed to be here every night, uh, to make the streams possible, for people to be able to watch it from home, uh, to the church in general uh, that has the equipment, has the facilities, uh, for all the ladies and men who have uh, put on the fellowship meal every night for everyone to eat, um, and has, have even managed to give me some uh, food also to take home so I don't go hungry doing all the preaching. Um, so I just want to praise the Lord for the members of the church that you don't see, for all the people who have been studying with other people. Uh, so there were baptisms this morning, amen? Um, that's where the real work is, friends. Um, believe it or not, what I'm doing up here is the easy part. Um, but actually getting to know the, the people, becoming people's friends, being there for those calls when they're going through something in their lives, when they don't feel like being Christians anymore, when they're giving up and the devil's on their tail, that's where the real work is, amen? It's life on life, true um, discipleship, true discipleship. So just thank you for all the unseen people. Um, I know we all do it for Jesus, but um, thank you. Thank you. And again, my heart is just overwhelmed, and um, I just want to say thank you again to the uh, Sandpoint Seventh-day Adventist Church for extending this offer uh, to go stand and preach to me to come out and even be able to put on this series. And uh, definitely fitting, and I'm glad we all listen to the Holy Ghost. Amen? Um, I've personally been blessed. Uh, the testimonies have been astounding. Um, members and non-members alike uh, just coming to me saying they want to go deeper with Jesus. And friends, that's what it's about, going deeper with Jesus. Uh, there will be a time of trouble such as never was. And friends, our lamps must be full. They must be full, friends, or we're not going to make it. Do not make the dangerous decision, a disastrous choice, and think the latter rain is going to do what the former rain should already be doing in your life. Seek him now while there's still day. Amen? For those just joining us who don't know what's going on for the first time tonight, we still love you. It's the last night. We're glad you're here. Uh, my name is Gordon McGee, the speaker and evangelist for Go Stand and Preach, and we've partnered with the Sandpoint Seventh-day Adventist Church to put on this series of meetings entitled Keeping the End in Mind, Wake Up America. And friends, we have learned quite a bit. Now, I'm sure everyone got caught up in fellowshipping this afternoon. How many people did their homework already? Oh, oh come on. Yeah, all my baptiz yeah, everyone who got baptized, your hand should be way up in the air. Amen? Amen. All right, I have one last assignment for you tonight. Revelation chapter 20. As I leave, I would like you to read Revelation chapter 20 as your homework assignment, friends. And by God's grace, we'll be able to shed some more light on this chapter tonight. As always, let's uh, have a quick review here of what we covered this morning, not last night, this morning. And I'm uh, so glad to see you all, too, that you made it back out. All right, God's Word instructs us to be baptized. Amen? We found that out this morning. We also found out that baptism is a symbol of a wash, washing away of our sins. Baptism is a symbol of death, burial, and resurrection, of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and of our death, burial, and resurrection here on this plane, and then in eternity. Baptism is a symbol of being married to Christ. Amen? Amen. We also discussed the Bible speaks of only one form of baptism, which is immersion, being submerged in the water, the watery grave. Jesus was baptized as an example to believers 
and also as a credit to those who would not be able to be baptized like the thief on the cross. Because Jesus didn't need to be baptized, friends. He was sinless. Amen? Amen. Uh, Baptized Christians believe and follow the teachings of Christ. We learned that this morning. Then we learned that there is a cost associated with being baptized. Amen? And that we should count that cost. We should know we're getting ourselves involved in. And friends, it's well worth it. Heaven is cheap enough. Hmm. We we discussed the times and needs to be, when it's time or needed to be re-baptized. We discussed that this morning as well. Uh, Baptism, when you're baptized, you are connected with a physical literal, local body of believers called the church. Amen? Amen. You're not just some rogue Christian with no accountability, believing whatever you want to believe and doing whatever you want to do. You know, Jesus submits to God the Father, doesn't he? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, something for us to learn there, friends. Uh, To refuse baptism is to refuse the counsel of God, friends. And lastly, we learn that God is well pleased with his children when they get baptized and they give their life to him. Amen? As always, I would invite you to bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. O gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us over these 12 days. Lord, 13 days, 13 meetings, Father. We thank you that the Holy Ghost has been present at every meeting, Father. That he's been been petitioning our hearts, Lord, to draw closer to you. You have been so gracious to reveal to us the truth for this time in this generation in which we're living so that we will not be taken by surprise and that we will be ready to meet you in peace and that we can do the work of warning our friends, our neighbors, and our enemies. Father, please give us an extra unction of the Holy Ghost to do the work that you've commissioned us to do. Father, those who have given their lives to you today in baptism and those who have in the past, please, Lord, let our names remain Send extra angels, Lord. Give us an extra portion of your spirit. Give us eyes to see. Let us have discernment that we may avoid the traps of the devil. Lord, have your way with our hearts tonight. Our last meeting, but Lord, really just the beginning of the end that is upon us. And I pray that you will close this meeting with just as much power as which you've opened, opened it with. Be with my words hide me behind the cross, and please, Lord, make the subject matter tonight plain and easy to understand is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The United Nations chief in 2021 stated, we can't, we can't lose hope on peace in the Middle East. (laughs) Many modern evangelicals today also believe there will be peace in the Middle East, Uh, but many of them believe this will happen during the thousand years or the millennium. Interesting, though, that early church leaders, nor the majority of Christian leaders throughout history, would have known about premillennial dispensationalism because it is an invention of the mid-19th century. It began with uh, John Nelson Darby, and then C.I. Schofield picked it up in his Bible commentary, and then it began to get more notoriety with Billy Graham as he picked it up. And then lastly, uh, who probably gave it its most prominent um, influence on the evangelical world was Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins with their Left Behind series. 
So tonight, friends, we could talk about post-mill, pre-mill, dispensational pre-mill, all mill. We can mill all night. But I think if we just study what the Bible has to say about the thousand years, all these questions will be answered. Amen? I once heard it said that, you know, you don't study the counterfeit in order to identify the true. But you study the true bill so that you might be able to identify the counterfeit bill. Amen? That is our goal tonight, friends. We are going to study Israel in the millennium, and we're going to go right to the Bible as we have every night. Every night, friends. And we're going to see what God's Word has to say about this thousand years. What did Jesus promise his people? In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you, friends. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friends, I want to encourage you. Do not lose out on eternity trying to chase mansions here on earth because there's one waiting for you in glory. Amen? Don't let the devil get you sidetracked believing, oh, I've got to go kill myself, work 60, 80 hours a week to build some business, miss out on my kids' eternity and my family, and then I'm going to die anyway when I already have mansions in heaven awaiting me. Amen? Where does the Bible speak about a millennium? All right, well, let's see. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4. So what you will find, friends, is that the literal word millennium is not in the Bible, but it comes from milli and annum, which means a thousand and a years. It's just a term that Bible students use to be able to communicate with one another and to confuse you and I. Millennium, that's where it comes from. But the Bible clearly speaks about a thousand year period. What events mark the beginning of the thousand years? This is going to be so easy tonight, friends. Simple. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Say amen to that. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment at the last trump. Amen? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Listen, immortality is so beyond our concept of understanding, friends, that I think we almost shrink back from wanting to believe it. I think I heard one person describe it this way. Imagine, imagine a hummingbird having to move the beach, let's say on the west coast, to the moon, one grain of sand at a time. And that would just be the first few seconds in eternity. Friends, we have no idea what God has in store for us, friends. So much better than this dark, dark, dark world we're living in. Who shall change your vile body? You know this body is vile, friends? <laughs> this vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto the glorious, unto his glorious body. Oh, come on. Nobody in here needs a new body? <sighs> Man, be excited about this, friends. I need all type of new parts. His glorious body. Philippians chapter 3, 21. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right. So at the beginning of the thousand years will be the first resurrection and the second coming of Jesus. Amen? This marks the beginning of the thousand years. 
Will Jesus come quietly or secretly when he returns? Oh, look at y'all, excited tonight. It's the truth what you're telling me. There is a left behind scenario out there, is there not? Like a thief, right? You know, it's interesting. 1 Thessalonians 5.4, I'm reading in your hearing. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Hmm. He's saying that it should not overtake you as a thief. But yet there's a strong, strong mm, teaching and hold that it's going to be as a thief of the night, and no one's going to know anything. Listen, let's talk about this for a second. When the Bible says as a thief in the night, here's what it means. If I was going to rob your house, friends, I would not call you in advance and let you know what time I was going to be there. Amen? But when you come home, you may notice a bust out window. Your neighbors might have seen a flashlight in your window. It wouldn't be a secret. I usually wouldn't know the time, the very hour in which I was coming, or I wouldn't be a successful thief. Amen? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a what? A thief. Now watch this. As a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Go outside this church, look up. The heavens are going to pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt. Hmm. How hot does something have to be for elements to melt? Come on, man. I'm talking about melting rock, friends. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Does that sound like nobody's going to know that's happening, friends? This is the same <laughs> mercy. This is the same verse that says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, but keep reading the verse. Don't say period. No, there's a comma. In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Friends, it means that we won't know the exact day and hour, but God has given us signs of the times. Amen? We've studied that together. It should not take us as an overwhelming surprise. We should not be going on and carrying on our lives as business as usual as if Jesus is not going to come for another thousand years. Hmm. Come on. We're Seventh-day Adventists. Last I checked. Adventists, the imminent, about to come belief in the Lord's return. Amen? We need to live like that, friends. People need to look at us and know that we believe, we believe that Jesus is coming soon. If we're too comfortable, if we're here vile, you know, like the apostles, who's going to be the highest? I've got to get this promotion. I've got to, I got to add on to my house. I got to, what are you, what? Are you leaving or are you staying? Can I speak plain to you tonight, friends? Are we leaving or are we staying? Come on, man. I talked to my good friends that have been raised in the church, some that are new, the new folks being raised in the church. They said, well, Jesus can't come until I get married. Man, hush your mouth. <laughs> hush your mouth. Lord, come whenever you need to, Please. The sooner the better. Just let these folks be saved that need to be saved. I'm not trying to stay here a day longer than we need to be. I already think we've been here too long. We're in overtime, friends. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That does not sound silent to me, friends. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, is what Jeremiah said in chapter 25, verse 30. Psalms 50. I love how all the Bible agrees, friends. Men that didn't even know each other. That's the Spirit of God, friends remind y'all, man, when you pick up this Bible, you're dealing with the Word. This is, all, this is something holy. 
It's the word of the words of the living God. We need to have a certain reverence and respect for God's word. Some of this foolishness I see online, man, people are so quick with their tongue. Oh, I'm going to get to it, though. Mm-hmm. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence, friends. And people are teaching that Jesus is going to come silently. Psalms 50, verse 3. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. That's turbulent or stormy, friends. Come on, man, stuff is plain. Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heaven, and then shall some, all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 30. Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, friends. Now understand the earth is round, right? Amen? I've got, you know, friends, people believe everything now, friends. I'm pretty sure the earth is round. What the text is, amen. <laughs> what the text does not say is that every eye shall see him at the same time. Amen. <clears throat> As Jesus and his angels are traveling around the globe, c- catching up all the saints that have died in Christ, and then those w- that remain that are caught up with him, he'll take us home. And every eye shall see him. Friends, listen, this is too clear to be misunderstood. Every person alive, wicked or righteous, will see Jesus return to earth. A secret gathering or rapture of God's people is not described in the Bible. Amen? What else will happen at the first resurrection? Let's see. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall what, friends? Consume with the brightness of his coming. So when Jesus comes in the cloud, his brightness will consume that wicked one. Amen? Now, if the wicked one is being consumed, what about the rest of the wicked? And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great, hmm, so great, that was Revelation 16, verse 18, And then it goes on in verse 20, and every island fled away. Listen, we don't know this God we're dealing with. The earth is trying to move away from Jesus when he comes. The mountains are fleeing. It's the presence of the almighty God. And the mountains were not found, and and there fell upon man a great hail about out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent. Now, we spoke about this. Anywhere from 72 to 75 pounds. These are bombs, friends. These are bombs. And the angel laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him. How long, friends? A thousand years, beloved. All right. So... The earth and the wicked are destroyed at the beginning of the thousand years, and also Satan is bound, which makes sense because he'll be bound for a thousand years. Amen? Amen. Who will be raised in the second resurrection, and when will it take place? Again, we're going to the Scriptures, friends. John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, all friends that are in the graves, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Two resurrections. But the rest of the dead, that only leaves the wicked, friends, 
lived not again until the thousand years were finished. It's easy. First resurrection is of the just. Second resurrection happens after the thousand years, at the close of the thousand years, and it's the second resurrection of the wicked or the evil. If you're following me, say amen. 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 This is very simple, friends. Not difficult tonight. In what condition will the earth be left after the devastating earthquake and hailstorm that begin the thousand years? Behold, the Lord maketh the earth, what's that, friends? empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down. The earth is utterly broken down, Isaiah 24, verses 1 and 19. Then Jeremiah says this, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, in the heavens, and they had no light. This should have your memory going somewhere, without form and void. Genesis, Amen. That's how the earth started out, right? Without form and void. And when God is done, he gathers his people, destroys the wicked. That first time, that first go round, in all all the destruction, the four winds have been let loose. The earth again is without form and void. And that word abusos, or bottomless pit, actually means without form and void. The earth is without form or void. It becomes a bottomless pit. Amen? All right. Jeremiah 4, verse 24 and 25. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled. There was no man, and all the birds of heavens were fled. The fruitful places was a wilderness, Jeremiah says. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. When is it? This is so easy. When does he come back? At the beginning of the thousand years. And his presence is going to destroy and consume the wicked and also break down all the cities. This is what we're reading, friends. And by his fierce anger. You know, everyone's talking real crazy now because Jesus is our high priest in the most holy place, interceding for us. But those priestly garments are soon to come off. And he won't be coming back as a, a lamb, friends. He'll be the lion of Judah. Revelation tells us the blood was up to the horse's bridle as he was treading the wine. You know, God loves us so much that he doesn't want us to be a recipient of that destruction. So he's given us ample warning, ample time to not be playing around. Jeremiah 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried, because no one will be here, friends, to do so. The earth will be totally devastated by the earthquakes and the hailstorms that strike when Jesus comes. It will be left in complete darkness. Dead people will lie strewed across the earth's surface with no mourning because no one, as I said, will be here to bury them. The righteous will not be here. Mm -hmm. Where will the saints be during a thousand years, friends? And what will they be doing? Now, this is important because many people believe there's a separation between Israel, little Israel, and the church. But the Bible is clear. Israel was called the church in the wilderness. Paul made no distinction, right? Those who are Israel, not Israel by blood, but by faith, friends. God has one children, one people, one church. We are the the sons and daughters of Adam. Jesus is the second Adam, friends. He's coming back to save humanity. Not one group or class of people, but humanity. All shapes, sizes, colors, ethnicities, whoever believes in Jesus becomes a Jew by faith. Amen? So what's going to happen during the thousand years? It says this, John 14, verse 3, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Amen? Jesus can't lie, friends. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And they lived and reigned with Christ 
a thousand years. We're fighting for positions at jobs, and we're going to be sitting on thrones. Come on, man. We're sitting on a throne, man. Mm, Revelation 24. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world, friends? You know, in Paul, contextually, in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2, he was saying this in the context, like, you know, church folks not getting along, wanting to argue and sue each other. And he was saying, man, why don't you grow up a little bit? Don't you know that you're going to judge the world? And if you're going to judge the world, shouldn't you be able to handle issues that arise in the church? Amen? I think this was great logic. Amen? He goes on. Know ye not that we shall judge angels, friends? Who are you and I to judge angels? Hmm. So during a thousand years, the saints will be in heaven participating in the judgment. Now, don't get it confused. We will not be deciding who is saved or who is lost because God has already done that. He comes with his reward, friends. We will simply be there confirming that God's judgments are right, that they are correct. You have judged justly, righteously. Amen? You are, Lord, you are good, for thy judgments are made manifest. Revelation 15, 4. The fairness of God's punishment for the, lo- for the loss will be affirmed, as well as the rewards for the righteous. Revelation 22, verses 11 and 12. Hmm. You know, this may be beneficial. We may get there, friends, and you may be looking like, we're, we're so-and-so. They didn't make it? Good Lord, what happened? And the books will be open to you. You might be going like, how'd that brother get in here? Man, yeah. Who let that brother in here, man? Well, come on, let me show you the books. Show you how he clung to me and allowed me to be his righteousness. Listen, friends, one of the, one of the wickedest king that ever lived in Israel, Manasseh, is going to be in heaven. Is that right? Brother made it the last minute, man. Last second. During the millennium, the righteous are in heaven judging. The earth is desolate during a thousand years. Do we see that from Scripture, friends? Amen? So right now, if you're hearing this for the first time, you've got to ask yourself, all these other things you've been taught about a thousand years of peace on earth, human beings reigning, Israel being set back up, sacrifices being reinstituted. No one's here, friends. Everyone's dead. The righteous are gone. The earth is destroyed. Some people even believe that we're in the thousand years now. Right now, we're in the thousand years. Well, how come Jesus didn't come? How come the dead, those dead in Christ didn't get caught up? How come those alive in Christ didn't get caught up? This is what happens when you study the truth. It exposes error. Amen? All right. What will happen at the close of the thousand years? Oh, yes, friends. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave. In the midst thereof. This is what Zechariah saw in chapter 14. And then John the Revelator said, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Friends, we are the guests to the marriage, friends. Jesus receives New Jerusalem, that golden city. Oh, we didn't have time this series transparent gold walls, jasper gates, and we're down here dying over jewelry. We're going to be walking on gold. You know, I heard a minister say one time, you know, what do the angels think when they see us walking around with asphalt around our necks? They're doing some strange things down there. They're they're walking around with concrete on their necks, friends. Think about it. 
If I went out to that parking lot, Jack Hambert came in here with some concrete on my neck, he'd look at me like I was crazy. We're going to be walking on streets of gold, friends. Transparent, pure gold. Mm. No impurities, just like the character of Jesus. Mm. At the close of the thousand years, New Jerusalem, with the saints inside of that city, will descend from heaven. And the land on what is now the Mount of Olives will be flattened out to make space for that city. Hmm. And what will happen next to free Satan from his prison? All right, so Satan's been here a thousand years on earth, friends. Just he and his fallen angels with him. No souls to tempt, no souls to pester. Just a thousand years to do some thinking. Talk about getting sent to your room. Go to your room. Jesus sends Satan to his room. Go to your room. Right? Doesn't he, didn't, didn't he want to claim this earth as his own? Satan's like, this is my home. Jesus is like, okay, you, you stayed there for a thousand years and think about what you've done. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. All right, so now at the end of the thousand years, the wicked are resurrected. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now he has some people to tempt again, some people to convince. You've got to take the city. I'm right. Jesus is wrong. Look at us. Look how he's done us. So what happens now? At the end of the thousand years also, the holy city descends, and Satan is loosed, and the wicked are raised. Just reading our Bibles tonight, friends. What will Satan do when the wicked are raised? Do you think he's repented? Do you think he's had a change of heart? Sorry for all the pain I caused, all the lives I've taken. Hmm? This really shows us the character of the enemy. And shall go out to deceive, friends. He should do what? Deceive. The nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. Those are the, name, the ancient names of God's enemies. And they're giving this title to those spiritually lost, or lost literally at the end of the world. To gather them together to battle, the number, oh my goodness, <coughs> of whom is as the sand of the sea. That is a lot of lost people, friends. And let me, let me, let me, <clears throat> let me paint a picture for you in your mind. Could you imagine being inside the city? being able to see through transparent walls, and you look out there and see, because you know you have perfect sight now. You won't need these when we're going, friends. We're getting glorified bodies. So you'll be able to see as far as the eye can see, and you'll be out there looking on that sand to see, and friends, how many of your neighbors will you see that you didn't tell? Huh? That you didn't warn? too busy. God forbid if your children are out there, cousins, relatives out there, spouse out there. And for those who think it's not possible, listen, Lot, when he left that wicked city, he was really the only person saved. His wife got turned into a pillar of salt, and his daughters were still overtaken by that wicked city and drunk wine and got their father drunk. He was the only person saved. Lot really only saved himself. He lost his family. Hmm. Listen, friends, we're not going to have another opportunity to warn people. This is it. You take the time that God has given you now, 24 hours in a day, and you need to make good on that time. Because God is going to come up in the judgment. I gave you this many breaths, these many steps. You know, we get watches for that now, right, to count our steps. Do we? How many steps have I taken today? What was my heart? God's got a way. Oh, man. Friends, I do not want to be inside the city looking at people that I didn't warn, friends. Amen? And they went upon the breath of the earth. That is the wicked, friends, the lost. 
encompass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land, as Ezekiel saw, verse 38, chapter 38. Satan had all this time to reconsider, to rethink. And as soon as these people are resurrected, he deceives them and says, let's go storm and take the city. This is why sin has to be removed, friends. Love demands justice. We are God's children. Let me say it to you this way. To all the men in this home and all the wives, all the the families that are here represented. Middle of the night, someone comes into your house to kill your family, to steal your goods. What is the expectation of the husbands in that situation? To protect. Amen? At all costs. Lay down your life if need be. This is it. The hour has come. You're just not going to come in here and destroy my family with no, with no fight. Now, if we, being wicked people, understand this, how much more God our Father? Do you think God is just going to let Satan, his evil angels, and the wicked just come in here and just decimate his whole place, his house? Mm-mm. He goes, okay, I'll let you reveal your character, but I'm going to raise his up again, and then I'm cleaning the house, friends. Yeah. I can't let this cancer stay in here. I had to save the body. This is a strange act for God, but an act that love demands, friends. That justice and righteousness demands. It demands it, friends. At this crucial moment, as Satan and his evil angels and the horde of the wicked that are as the sand of the sea go to storm the gates, what happens? What happens? What stops it? What stops everything? Revelation 20, verse 11 and 12. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. God's throne will suddenly appear in heaven above the city, and the final phase of the judgment begins. The assault of the city of God is thus brought to an instant halt. The books will be opened, and every person's life will be made to pass before him. Everything will be open for the wicked and for the righteous. Panorama view, friends. Imagine this, the great white throne judgment. And what will happen after the wicked are judged? As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. That at that name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in the earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, Philippians 2, verse 10 and 11. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, true and righteous are his judgments, friends. The wicked will admit, confess that God was right that Jesus had tried everything, had sent everyone to try to awake them out of their slumber and their sleep. And the question about God's character will forever be answered throughout all eternity. What happens after that great white throne judgment, friends? Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's the wicked, friends. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, is your name written there, friends? Mm. Was cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, verse 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire as well. There is no eternally burning hell, friends. Revelation 20, 14. This is the second death. The earth will be purified with fire, holy fire. Before it was with water. This time it was with fire. Everything will be made. I'm getting ahead of myself. New, friends. After the fire goes out, what will happen, friends? Mm. What will God do for his people? Mm. For behold, Isaiah says, chapter 65, verse 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. 
And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, John said. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. We, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, Peter said. Righteousness. Listen, friends, if you don't love righteousness now, we're going to a place that's only righteous. Hmm. And God is not going to force you against your will. Where will God and the righteous finally live, friends? Come on. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Amen? He's been dwelling in us in this earthly tabernacle, and then finally the physical tabernacle comes down, and he's with us for all eternity. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. Friends, this has been an amazing, amazing time with you. But the real question is, at the end of this series, is are you willing to accept Jesus' plan for your life? Are you willing to have your name written in the book of life, to remain there forever? Are you willing to take Jesus as your righteousness, to forsake sin, to be on his side, to warn friends, families, and enemies about the soon coming and appearing of our Lord. And that there is an opportunity right now today to be saved from this impending judgment. This is the question, friends. Everything we've preached, I've preached all these last three weeks, boils down to this question tonight. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Because, friends, this may be the last time we see each other. Amen? This may be it, friends. I may not see you again until the resurrection of the just or of the unjust. Mm. Through those doors await you pain, suffering, loss, tragedy, strife a world that will hate you for being a Christian, beyond that doors, waste mortgages for you, property, oh man, loss of child, life, parent. But friends, if you take Jesus with you, hmm, what can overcome you, friends? You can't leave this place without Jesus tonight. This morning, I made an appeal for anyone who may have felt the need to be rebaptized. And friends, the Spirit of God is working in this place during these meetings because another individual came forth and made the decision to get baptized. Yes, friends. This is my brother Jason Shuchuk, a very good friend of mine who has an amazing, amazing testimony. Hmm. God, you can never run too far from God. And here comes his lovely wife. And what did you say? Is Mason coming? Oh, you're going to go on the his phone? All right. Um, friends, there may be somebody else here like Jason this morning, already in the church, but knowing that you have gone far away from the Lord, and maybe you've come back and feel a need to recommit yourself to God. There may be somebody else who wants to have Bible studies and get baptized. Listen, you need to take that white envelope. I'm leaving, but the church is still here. Amen? Amen? And you need to write down and say, I want to be baptized. I want to get the Bible studies going. I need to be rebaptized and communicate that to God's people again. We don't know when there's going to be another baptism. We don't know how much time we have left. You need to make a decision for Christ tonight, friends. If you feel the Spirit, th today is the day of salvation. Amen? Jason, I'm proud of you. <laughs> you have listened to the Spirit of God and you have responded. You have courageously stepped forward and have followed his leading. 
he has led you once again to these waters because publicly you want to testify that there is no one that's gone too far. As long as there is time and there's grace, you can respond. And the Lord is there. And Jason, because you love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, because you want to testify to that love and his truth that is faithful, his word that is faithful and true, and you want to live by that word that proceeds from his mouth, because you want to be a faithful witness, you want to be ready, you want to to help your family be ready. His coming is soon. And you want to be faithful even to the very end. I, as a minister of the gospel, baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is this still a pianist in the house? Can we have a song, friends? Can we have a closing song? Come on, let's sing. Let's praise the Lord. Let's do our theme song if we could. Oh, brother, be faithful. You can get the words on the screen. Beloved, God has been in this place, friends. We have been in the presence of God and his holy angels. And I just want to thank him and praise him for allowing us to witness it, this side of eternity. There is a lot of work still to be done, friends. There's a 1040 window that needs to be reached. There's more people in this community and in our homes that need to be reached. Amen? Amen. Come on. I ask you to stand to your feet. Let's praise the Lord. Friends, if you've seen the Lord work, let's sing out to God. Because this is what we need to have happen. We need to be faithful, friends. Amen? Oh, brother, be faithful. Soon, Soon Jesus, Jesus will come. For whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon we shall enter our glorious home. And join in the call. Such unbounded and infinite love Who died to redeem us is all Oh brother, be faithful Eternity's years Shall tell of thy faithfulness now When bright smiles of gladness Shall scatter thy tears A coronet gleam Let us pray. Oh, Father, you know that our promises are like ropes of sand. So we throw our helpless souls in the arms of Jesus and pray, Father, keep us faithful. You said you will finish the work you've begun in each, each one of us, and we take you at your word. You are a God who cannot lie. Father, my prayer is when discouragement and trials come, that my brothers and sisters here will keep looking up, that they would have their eyes fixed on Jesus and his ability and his power to save and deliver from every sin, temptation, and defect of character. Lord, when the enemy comes, let us say like Jesus said, there is nothing in us for him, Lord Father. Lord, keep these. Never lose sight of these, Father. All the seed that has been sown, I believe by faith, it has fallen on good soil, and it would bear much fruit. Lord, 
I pray that every name here will remain in the book of life by your grace, by your strength, and by your power. And the church said, amen. Love you. Come on. We have an announcement. You can be seated. Thank you, Gordon. This has been tremendous. It's been incredible. It's been great to see you, Gordon, and how God is working in your life. And despite the tragedy you've gone through, you're now giving the devil a beating. It's great. (laughs) He didn't say that in his testimony because you said, you you mentioned your testimony, how you, as his wife is dying, he's like, man, if the devil takes you out, I'm going to do everything I can to take him out. And he said, this is the part you left out. She looked at him like, go get him. So praise the Lord, Gordon, what you're doing. So I want to just share a couple of things with you. Uh, Tomorrow, um, we have a cooking class, Cooking with Judy. Uh, It's April 24th, tomorrow, so 2 to 4 p.m. If you're interested in healthful cooking, you'll definitely want to make it to that. And uh, there's a second one, and the deacons have some flyers in the back there if you're interested. Another one that's uh, near and dear to my heart is the Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program. Who hears, I, I won't, don't even raise your hand, but everybody's had depression, anxiety, and it's rampant in our society. Um, so this class is amazing, and it's uh, March 29th through May 31st. I, yeah. So keep reading the dates. So, so that'll be this Tuesday mm-hmm. at 1327 Superior at the Idaho Pain Clinic there, mm-hmm. um, 6 to 8 p.m., so come this Tuesday. This was the class that I attended, my wife and I attended, and then we let out in here in Sandpoint before I knew she was going to pass away. And I believe God used this to help fortify my mind and give me strength for that loss that was coming up. So even if you don't think you suffer from depression, anxiety, you be preventative, friends. It's something that you should go be prepared for and get your mind strengthened, and it's been a blessing and still a help to me this day. So Amen. I just want to give a personal testimony for that, friends. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thank you so much for coming. Amen.